Later, Marco, who he said. It wasn't you because you weren't there yet, so it can't be. But I said, who's the smartest? He gave me a name. I said, so who's the dumbest? He goes, probably Joe. This is like 20 years ago, 20-something years ago. Probably Joe. I said, who's Joe? He said, Joe Biden. I said, really? He's a dumb guy? Yeah, he didn't understand policy. He didn't understand tax. He didn't understand anything. He's hale and hearty and well met. And outside of his really bad hair, he's, you know, sort of a good-looking guy at the time, right? I think the facelift did not help him. No, he said, I'm going to get myself a facelift. I'm going to give it one more try. You know, he tried it three or four times. Didn't work. He tried it three or four times, and he said, I'm going to look great. I'm going to get a facelift. You know what took him so long to get into the race? The facelift didn't work. <laughs> Under my leadership, we will make America affordable again so that every American family can afford to take a thing called a vacation. Isn't that nice? And on day one, we will throw out Bidenomics and replace it with a thing called MAGA-nomics. We will quickly build the greatest economy in the history of the world. I will repeal every disastrous Biden regulation, of which there are many. Cancel Crooked Joe's insane electric vehicle mandate. How stupid. And we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to drill like we never drilled before. We were energy independent four years ago. Thank you. We're going to be energy dominant within months. Four years ago, energy independent. I will deliver large tax cuts, larger than you even have now. Do you know, I tell the story to people, it's hard to believe. I reduced taxes, the largest tax cuts in the history of our country. I reduced them, bigger than the Reagan tax cuts many years ago. And with a lower rate, the following year, we took in much more tax money. Think of it. So we're getting much less. That meant for small businesses, large businesses, because that's what the job creators are for middle-income people, low-income people, everybody. And he wants to let that expire. And if you do, your taxes are going to go up about five times, four times to five times more. How would you feel if they raise your taxes by four or five times? Not too. And remember that, remember that when you're going into the voting booth, I, do I want to pay? Do I want to have a terrible president who has no idea where the hell he is? And less importantly, do I want to pay four times more tax? And remember, what I'm going to do is something that nobody has ever even thought about doing. No tax on tips. For all of you waitresses, for all of you caddies at Doral. You know, I, I came to Doral, and there were some caddies at the shack. We call it Caddy Shack. It's the most beautiful Caddy Shack I've ever seen. We have the world's most beautiful. They sit down and watch television. And uh, I never had this before. They were out for a round. They're very sweaty, very, very sweaty guys. You know, look, they're carrying bags all over the place. Not easy. It's 100 degrees out today, 103, 104. And they saw me, and they gave me the biggest hug. I said, get the hell out of here. You're soaking wet. I said, why do you like me so much today? But in the past, you never touched me and kissed me and hugged me. It's very simple, sir. No tax on tips. Thank you very much. So for caddies, for waitresses, for I mean, this tremendous. And it's a very complicated thing, frankly, uh, for the government to collect. But they've issued new rules and regulations that make it very bad for people. I, the reason I thought of this, I was in Nevada, where we're leading, by the way, a lot. We're up by like 14 points in Nevada. That's supposed to be a little bit Democrat territory. But we're leading in Nevada, and a waitress came over, beautiful waitress. And I never like talking about physics, because she's beautiful inside because you never talk about a person's look, ever. You never mention it. The other day, I got very angry. Some man called Chris Christie fat. And I said, sir, and then he said he was a pig. I said, sir, Chris Christie is not a fat pig. Please remember that. He is not a fat pig. Please take it back. And the guy's looking at me like, really? No, we have to defend people. You can't call people fat. So I said about nine times, he is not a fat pig. So every time you leave a tip for the next four months, because it's going to go into effect very quickly, make sure that you write on the receipt, vote Trump for no tax 
on trips. No tax on tips. That's a good one. No, but the waitress said, I said, how are you doing? She said, they worked there a long time. Great person, beautiful person. And she said, oh, it's brutal with the government, what they do to us. It's crazy. They come, you know, they put on 88,000 people to go and take advantage of people like that. And she said, it's brutal. I said, you know, I have a great idea. How about no tax on tips? That was the extent of my study. One waitress. But it's true. It made so much. Isn't it funny that nobody ever thought of that but me? Isn't that weird? But it's a great thing, and they deserve their money. They work hard for it. They deserve it. They deserve it. Marco, you're going to vote for it, I hope. Well, you may or may not be there to vote for it, but you'll be involved. It's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us. They know that we are the only ones who can stop them. That's why they are weaponizing law enforcement against their opponents. They are turning America into communist Cuba or socialist Venezuela. By the way, Venezuela is much more than socialist by now. You know that, right? We got it. Who's here from Venezuela? Who's here from Cuba? You know, I had it all done with Cuba. I was going to, they didn't rig the election within six months. We were going to have that all worked out. They were ready. Then Biden came in, right? Then Biden came in, he opened it up. It's a disgrace. Trying to silence dissent and put their political adversaries behind bars. He wants to put me behind bars. My parents are looking down saying, this was not planned when he went to the Wharton School of Finance. The great Alphonse Capone, you know Alphonse, a very nice gentleman, very fine man. Scarface, they call him in some territory. Here's a scar from here to here. He didn't get it by playing tiddlywinks either. No, he was a guy that, see this man right up here, he's a very tough guy, I know him, he's tough as hell. If he ever had dinner with Al Capone and Al Capone didn't like him, he'd look at him and say, are you mocking me? And this guy would go, no, no, <laughs> I promise I'm not. But if Alphonse didn't like you, you'd never see him again, darling. Your husband would never be home again. He'd right now be a part of a foundation of a very tall building. But Al Capone! Got indicted less than I did. Think of it, Alphonse Capone. My parents would look down, they were so great. They're saying, how did this ever happen to my son? But you know what? We're finding out, and everybody knew, and I've been saying it's a total fraud. It was election interference, that's all it was. All Biden, they're all Biden indictments, the local ones, the state ones. They're all Biden indictments, a bad guy. And he's unleashed a horrible thing on this country. He's really done, wouldn't you say, Byron? He has unleashed a horrible thing because, you know, that can happen the other way around, too. But the Supreme Court came out with an incredible decision this week, and it was, I have great respect for the courage that they've shown. Great, great respect for the courage that they, they've shown. They have, they have great intellect and great uh, insight, incredible insight. They got it. They saw what was happening, not only with me, but with other people, what they did with the Fisher verdict. You know the Fisher verdict, right? That has to do with the J6 people. They had great, great, great decisions this last week. Decisions on regulations that are going to free up businesses and allow businesses to hire people and thrive. All of their persecution is only happening because I am running for president and leading very big in every single poll. And we're not just leading against crooked Joe Biden, we're leading against Kamala. And we're leading against everybody else, and our senators and our congressmen are coming in with us. We're going to have a big, big day, most important day. The radical left Democrats have spent this entire election posing as defenders of democracy. You ever hear Biden? Uh, he's a threat to democracy. He doesn't even know what the hell the term is. He's Trump is a threat to democracy. This guy, low IQ. He's a low IQ individual. But they're lying in the entire world at Joe Biden's condition. I mean, you see his condition. You see them frantically trying to overturn the results of 50 state primaries and install a new candidate at the behest of their very rich donors. Do you know that we took in record numbers over the last four weeks, and most of it was taken in with small donors, $61 on average, $61. And those people vote. But the Democrats, I think that their funding is stopping because I think they're, 
They're rich donors. They have a lot of rich donors. We have some, but we, we don't really focus on it. We focus on the small donor. Very To me, every, one thing, every small donor votes. The rich donors, they're in Monte Carlo during the election. You know, how's the election going? Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. He's really, he is a major threat to democracy, and Democrats are the ones who really want to destroy democracy and our country. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. And every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I do. Because I'm being indicted for you. Never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's as simple as that. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun being indicted. Thank you. I didn't know. What does it mean to be indicted? Thank you. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way. And I always will be standing in their way. We're not going to let happen to our country what's happened to so many countries that many of you people were very much involved in through your parents and grandparents. You know what happened to so many of those countries. We're thrilled to be joined tonight by many fantastic Florida patriots, including a man who's become really a friend of mine. We had a vicious campaign for a while, and he was tough and he was smart. And I got to really know him well over the years, and he's a fantastic guy, Senator Marco Rubio. Marco. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. And you have a great tandem because you have another great senator who was a great governor, fantastic governor, Senator Rick Scott. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. We have a lot of congressmen. Let's introduce it. What the hell else do we have to do, right? Should we introduce? And by the way, at the end, do you want the music or do you want no music? Music, ready? Music or no music, ready? Who wants the music? Who wants a little bit quicker, no music? I think we have music tonight. Get the music ready. Get the music ready. We have some incredible, talented warriors, representatives. Corey Mills. Corey, thank you. Thank you, Corey. Great guy. Brian Mast. We love Brian. Thank you, Brian. Mike Waltz. Thank you, Mike. Doing great. A man I'm not going to get into a fight with him anytime soon. Byron Donalds, who's fantastic. His wife, by the way, is a true expert on education. I say, stay ready. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you, Donna, for being here. Appreciate it. Great, great person. Maria Salazar. Thank you, Maria. Great. Thank you very much. Carlos Jimenez. Carlos. Good man. Mario Diaz Bellart. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. You have a fantastic lieutenant governor who's here, Jeanette Nunez. Jeanette, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you. And Florida State Senators Debbie Mayfield. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you very much. Ileana Garcia. Thank you. Anna Maria Rodriguez. Thank you. Great people. State Representatives Jessica Baker. Randy Fine. Where's Randy Fine? Good. Thanks, Randy. Kevin Steele. Paula Stark. 
Juan Carlos Poros, Alina Garcia, David Barrero, Fabian Basebe. Fabian, thank you. Tom Fabricio. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Vicky Lopez, a very good guy, fantastic person, great politician, frankly, but he loves the state. Incoming Speaker of the Florida House, Danny Perez. Thank you, Danny. Good job. Good luck, Danny. That should be an easy job. Good luck. And Alex Rizzo. Thank you, Alex, very much. A person who I know personally does a fantastic job is the mayor of Doral, Christy Fraga. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Great job. Appreciate it. Vice Mayor Oscar Pugue Carve. Oscar, a vice mayor. Thank you, Oscar. Councilwoman Digna Cabral. Thank you, Digna. Thank you very much. Sweetwater Mayor Jose Pepe Diaz. I've known him a long time. Pepe. Western Mayor Margaret Brown. Thank you, Margaret. Boy, we got a lot of politics. You have, to, you have no idea. I'm, I'm introducing about 25%. We did it by the luck of the draw. Miami-Dade County Commissioners Kevin Cabrera and J.C. Bermudez. J.C., thank you. Great people, great politicians, but good politicians. The next Miami-Dade County Sheriff, Rosie Cordero Stutz. Thank you, Rosie. Good luck. She has my endorsement. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Ambassador Carlos Trujillo. Carlos. Carlos Trujillo. Thank you, Carlos. Great job you're doing. A friend of all of ours, and a wo I, this woman is amazing. Laura Loomer. Where is she? Where is Laura? She is amazing. Felix Lasarte. Felix. Where is Felix? My lawyer. He's my lawyer. How am I doing? Am I getting the damn zoning done, Felix? He's doing a great job. And my sons, and we have one of my sons. This is the first time he's ever done it. First of all, one you know, and he's an incredible guy. He's very tough. He's very, very strong. Great speaker. Great talent. Donald Trump, Jr. And another son who's here tonight. I love when my sons and family come, you know, it's really nice. Somebody who's fantastic, works so hard, so smart, has a great wife, a great wife, as does Don. Oh, you, you like Laura, right? Let's get off, Eric, and let's talk about Laura. Laura's only the head of the Republican Party. She's upwardly mobile. She's upwardly mobile. But a man who's done an incredible job at the company, and there's, I think there has never been a human being that's had more subpoenas. Every day, Congress would serve a subpoena on him, and he has done some job, I'll tell you. Eric Trump. Thank you. Great job. And a very young man. This is a young man. He just turned 18. Oh, look at this. A very young man who's now going to college, got into every college he wanted to, and he made his choice. And he's a, he's a very good guy, I'll tell you. You know, I'm not allowed to call them boy, but he is my boy. He's my boy. They're all my boys, right? When you have sons, they can be any age, they're your boy, they're always going to be. And he's a very special guy. Baron Trump. This is the first time he's ever done this. Baron. Where is Baron? Stand up. Look at him. That's the first time he's done it. That's the first time, right? 
Hey, you're pretty popular. I, he might be more popular than Don and Eric, and we got to talk about this. Hey, Don, we got to talk about this, huh? All right. So, Baron, it's good to have you. Welcome to the scene, Baron. I don't know. He had such a nice, easy life. Now it's a little bit changed. Anyway, a special guy, right? Also, some grandchildren who are very talented. Uh, two of them are great golfers, really great golfers. You all know about Kai. Where's Kai? Kai. And a real little killer. She hits a long ball for her size. She can barely lift the club until she swings. She's, her swing is perfect. Chloe. And Don Jr. is here, somewhere, I think. Uh, Vanessa is here. Oh, there he is. Good. Hi, Don. What a good group. Vanessa Trump, stand up. Thanks. Thank you, Don Jr. That's good. Don the third. And also uh, a real friend of the family. She's been friendly. You know, she started off in the five years ago. And she made that show very successful. She was the star of that show, actually. And she was always good to me a long time, long before I knew her in this capacity. And uh, she was really a big uh, star on television, very, very big. The five, when it, was very, when it was just in its infancy and it was hot as it could be. Kimberly Guilfoyle. Thank you, Kimberly. And she hasn't stopped. So thank you all for being here. And I know I didn't uh, introduce many, many congressmen and likes of others, but I think we have to get back to the business at hand. Is it too hot for anybody? No, not bad. Once you get used to the fact that you're soaking wet, from the moment we take back the White House from Crooked Joe Biden, I believe we are going to have the four greatest years of the history of our country. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we, we, all of us together, win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled, and I will prevent our nation, and we will prevent the whole world from entering World War III, because that's where we are. We're very close to World War III, and Biden doesn't have a clue. We should have never allowed if you think about it, Russia, Ukraine would have never happened. October 7th, the attack on Israel would have never happened. Inflation would have never happened. Think of our country if the election wasn't rigged. Think of it. Think where we'd be if they didn't rig that election. So we're not going to let it happen again because our country won't exist. It would be the la I believe it would be the last election we've ever had if anything happened. I really believe it. We're not going to let that happen. you got to get out and vote. If I was president, though, the and think of it, Afghanistan, one of the most embarrassing moments in the history of our country would also never have happened. It would have never happened. You know, Ukraine, when you think Ukraine, I had a very good relationship with Putin. We talk about it. It was the apple of his eye. It would have never happened. I told him, can't do it. You're not going to do it. October 7th, the attack on Israel. I knew it so well. They had no money because the purveyor of funds was Iran, and Iran was broke. They had all sorts of sanctions. Nobody could buy. China couldn't buy. China was a massive buyer of oil from Iran. I said, if you buy from Iran, you can't do business in the United States. And they did very well in the United States. And they didn't buy nobody, but Iran was broke. They had no money for Hezbollah. They had no money for Hamas. And we had no terror. You know, I always wanted to talk about it when I was president. I was three years in, three and a half years in. I said, I want to just brag a little bit. I want to say that we had no terror. There were no terror attacks in four years, but I wanted to brag about it. But I wanted to wait till I got out, and now I brag about it all the time. We had very few terrorists allowed into our country. We had a year 2019 where the charts come out, how many terrorists enter the country. Now, I think they're wrong because I can't believe it, but they actually had no terrorists, zero terrorists came in 2019. That was a Trump year. Now we have thousands and thousands of terrorists pouring into our country from all over the world, and they're the worst terrorists in the world. They're the biggest and the worst, and we got them living in our country. They actually put down 2019, Trump, no terrorists, zero. I don't believe that. 
But that's what they have. And that was done by Border Patrol and others, State Department. I'll take it. I don't believe it. But it was very close to nothing. And they actually have zero terrorists came into our country. We were tough on it. And we would not have Russian warships and nuclear submarines surrounding Cuba 60 miles off our coast. You know that, right? For all of you people in Cuba, congratulations. You're now being protected by Russia. Congratulations. Can you imagine that the press, the fake news, those people, they don't even talk about it. We have nuclear submarines and five warships in Cuba, and they don't even talk about it. If that happened to me as president, it would be the biggest story every single day. But they don't talk about it because they're fake and corrupt news. When I was in the White House, I canceled Barack Hussein Obama's deal with the Cuban dictatorship and reimposed tough sanctions on that regime. They were ready to break. They were all set. Now we had the election taken away, robbed, rigged. Joe Biden is gone, weak and soft on Cuban communists. As you know, you know better than anybody, so many of you here. And he's abandoned the brave Cuban dissidents while the Cuban people are suffering, starving, and dying in Cuba. Would have been all solved very quickly. As president, I will again stand with the people of Cuba in their long quest for justice, liberty, and freedom. In my next term, we will build a great iron dome over our country, a dome like has never been seen before, a state-of-the-art missile defense shield that will be entirely made in the USA, right here in, right here in your state. Right here in Florida, we'll build a big section. You have a lot of defense. We moved a lot of companies into Florida for defense purposes. I will not cut one penny from Social Security or Medicare, and I will not raise the retirement age by one day. Biden is going to do that because he's allowing these people that come in to go on to Social Security and Medicare, to go into the hospitals. And, you know, we want to be nice. But no country can sustain this. No country can sustain it. I kept that promise for four straight years, and I will keep it again. We have plenty of other resources. We're not going to touch Social Security or Medicare. If the millions of Biden migrants became citizens, Medicare and Social Security will be gone. They'll be gone. They'll be gone. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they have ever, ever, ever been before. We will take over the horribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C., and clean it up, renovate it, and rebuild our capital city so that it's no longer a nightmare of murder and crime, but rather it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. Right now, if you leave Florida, oh, let's go, darling. Let's look at the Jefferson Memorial. Let's look at the Washington Monument. Let's go and look at some of the beautiful scenes and you end up getting shot, mugged, raped. We're going to take over our capital, and we're going to run it tough and smart, and we're going to beautify it. We're going to get all the graffiti off the marble. We're going to fix the roads and the medians, which are falling down all over the streets. We're going to make our capital beautiful again. We're going to do the same thing with our cities, even though Democrat run. We're going to work with Democrat governors and mayors if we have to. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And I will keep men out of women's sports. Can you imagine? Can you imagine even having to say that? I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. We will protect innocent life, and we will restore free speech in our country. And I will secure our elections once and for all. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots, proof of citizenship, and voter ID. Very simple. But until then, Republicans must win. You must get out and vote. We want a landslide, and let's call it this, too big to rig. Too big to rig. Thank you. Look at all the front row Joes. Oh, wow. 
Wow, they've, they've been to like 200 rallies. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to have you. Great. It's a great honor. These are real patriots. They make a lot of money, I guess, because they're at every rally. I go to California.